Hi there, I'm James, and welcome back to Hyper Tops. Today, not only are we looking at Mark 24, the world's new, longest spinning finger top, but we will also look at how it performs spinning on Ruby and Sapphire. That's right, I listened to your comments, and after much struggle, I've made a Ruby and Sapphire base. Now, I have plans to test Ruby on Ruby, and even Monocrystalline Diamond. Yes, you heard that right. Diamond, but that will be a future video. What you're about to see is the product of eight years of development, and I'm excited to show you the improvements and share the record-breaking results. But first, let me give some context. It seems most of my recent subscribers came across my channel quite randomly, which is understandable because spinning top optimization is a very niche hobby. So how did we get here, and where are we going? Let's go back to 2016, when I was 13. Mark 1 was my first ever lathe project, a spinning top which spun for 3 minutes, and ever since then I've been chasing perfection. With each iteration I try and make a spinning top which spins for longer and longer. I started this YouTube channel in 2017, documenting my progress and slowly but surely, as I kept breaking barriers, people started joining my journey. I first broke the record setter world record with Mark 22's spin of 1 hour and 2 minutes. Since then, I've traded the record back and forth with someone else. However, since I submitted Quasar 1's 1 hour and 12 minute spin, I haven't heard anything. So now, I have my sights set on the Guinness world record. The situation with Guinness is also complicated, but essentially, the record I'm competing against was set in 1999 with a string-started thrown top. However, the updated rules now prohibit the use of a string start, so I have to try and beat this record with a traditional finger-started top. What is the record, you may be wondering? It stands at 1 hour 37 minutes and 42 seconds. That is a long time. But recently, with every new design, I've come closer and closer, and Mark 24 is no exception. In the last video, we looked at Mark 23. The biggest changes here were with the aerodynamic underside and lighter stem. However, the flywheel finish wasn't great, and the knurling was quite poor, so these were the main areas of focus for Mark 24. I made the knurled grip as a separate component and instead of using a regular knurling tool, which struggles with conical knurling, I made straight grooves with a kind of metal planing operation. As you can see, I've angled these cuts, which makes the grip, well, grippier for a clockwise spinner like me. There's also an argument to be made that this is a bit more aerodynamic than an unangled cut, but the difference it makes to spin time is negligible. Since the hollow core used in Mark 23 was so successful, I used a similar design for Mark 24. The only difference is a bit more volume removed from the underside so the top can topple properly. This core was CNC machined by the sponsor of this video, JLC CNC. JLC CNC is a company offering computer numerical control machining services for competitive prices. Based in China, their prices were lower than any Western company I checked. Placing an order is super easy. You just go to their website, click Order Now, upload a 3D model, and specify the details such as the material, surface finish, and tolerances. Now we can save to cart, pick a shipping speed, and check out. JLC CNC is in a group of companies which offer other services including 3D printing, mechatronics, and printing circuit boards. I personally used their PCB service a few years ago for a robotics project before they sponsored me. I would encourage you to check them out. Thanks again to JLC CNC for sponsoring this video and making Mark 24's core. Attached to the core is a dense flywheel made from 90% tungsten and 10% copper. This alloy has a density of 16.7 grams per centimeter cubed. That's more than six times denser than the aluminium used in the core. The reason I didn't use pure tungsten is the difficulty in machining. Tungsten is a very hard metal, and for now, my lathe simply won't cut it. Tungsten is also very unforgiving when it comes to balancing, as any variation in the flywheel density can ruin the top. This time round, for the sake of concentricity and aerodynamics, 
I spent a long time rounding and polishing the flywheel. The exact geometry is designed so air can flow smoothly over the top and bottom edge and eject in a central disc without any flow separation or unduly turbulence. The smoothness of the surface helps to reduce the viscous drag of this process. Hopefully my iPad drawing somewhat explains this. Once again, I'm using a titanium stem, this time with a better compromise between length and flexibility. As a result of these improvements, I was able to start Mark 24 at 2300 RPM. That's a whopping 15% faster than I started Mark 23. I still think there's plenty of room for improvement in this department, and more testing is required. Finally, and most importantly, is the contact point. Instead of high-speed steel, Mark 24 uses a sharp tungsten carbide tip. Under the microscope, we can see what a tip looks like after a few hours of spinning. The contact patch has been worn to about 0.1mm in diameter, or the thickness of a human hair. And this is a freshly sharpened tip. As you can see, the contact point is much smaller, at around 0.03mm, or 30 microns. I believe I can make the tip even sharper, but that could be looked at in a future video. Also, here's some bonus footage showing the smoothness of ruby, sapphire, and ceramic bearing balls. Anyway, the sharp tip spins on a polished and concave tungsten carbide base. However, since both materials are equally hard, the base also gets worn. Here you can see scratch marks left by the tip during the starting phase of the spin, which were made as the tip drags along the surface. And here you can see a larger patch where the top drills microscopic holes into the base as it spins in place. As I mentioned earlier, in addition to this, I ground sapphire and ruby discs into similar polished concave bases and tried them too. Now hold up, high speed steel, tungsten carbide, sapphire and ruby? You might be thinking these are rather exotic and expensive sounding materials to be using for spinning tops. If you'd be interested in a sequel to my spinning top science video in which I explain these materials and design choices in detail, do let me know in the comments. But for now, all you need to know is that these materials are good because they are seriously hard. For context, high speed steel is commonly used for custom ground lathe tooling, and tungsten carbide is what most lathe cutting inserts are made from. Sapphire and ruby on the other hand are ceramics which are often used in mechanical watch movements due to their wear resistance and appearance. Clearly, these materials are incredibly hard. The downside of using materials this hard is that they are hard to machine. In fact, grinding is pretty much the only way to shape them, and that's exactly what I did. After mounting the base blanks, I pressed them against a spinning synthetic diamond coated ball to make the rough geometry. Then, I used diamond lapping paste on an equally sized bearing ball to polish the surface. This took about two hours each, and a lot of messing around with strange methods, including super gluing the base directly to my finger. And unfortunately, one of my sapphire bases crumbled in the process. That's the other problem. These materials are very brittle. One slip and your ruby disc is ruby dust. Oh, did I mention these are expensive? Anyway, here we are, Mark 24 ready to go and three bases ready to test. What are the results? Well, I am excited to say, Mark 24 spun for a whopping 1 hour, 20 minutes and 11 seconds. You heard that right, the 1 hour and 20 minute barrier has fallen, and this time I got it on camera. Keep an eye out for a full spin video coming soon.
So, which base came out on top? Well, it was actually the tried and tested tungsten carbide that spun the longest, although it was very close. Looking at the data I collected, if we remove the difference in starting speeds, the decay pattern and efficiency on each base are practically identical. This isn't very surprising, because the hardness and coefficient of friction of all three are very similar. Still, it's exciting to find materials which perform as well as carbide, which until now stood alone as the ideal material. So what's next? As I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm working on a monocrystalline diamond base. It was actually meant to make an appearance in this video, but it's proving to be about as hard to machine as it sounds. The takeaway is, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on in my workshop. So if you want to follow this project, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. If you want to be notified when I upload, you can click the bell icon below. And as always, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, I'd love to hear them and I do my best to respond to everyone. See you soon. Thanks for watching.